Welcome back to Better's Edge, NFL's Better's Edge. And we've got some new faces this year. I've got Scott and David here. And of course, Pony and Hannah have moved on to greener pastures. We couldn't keep up with them. Uh, but we've got the same kind of content this year. We're going to have tons of NFL betting picks. And we're looking at NFL week one here, Sunday action. So make sure you stay tuned. We're going to have five betting picks for you, including the Sunday night football game. Uh, so before I get to it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so that way you don't miss out on everything we do. Turn on those notifications and use that promo code EDGE to save 20% off on all the picks. So you can get any three of us or for anybody else you like over at picksandparlays.net. Make sure you go over there. Okay, let's kick it off here. Early game, Vikings and Giants. It's a one o'clock game. Vikings favored by one and a half, uh, total 41. Let's start with Mr. Scott. Scott, what do you like in this one? Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Well, first of all, this is one of those games you, you, you would say that is a game that only a better could love. And I actually do love this game. I'm looking at the money line with the Giants right here, guys. And before you poo-poo me and start throwing things here on our first show of the season, let me make my case. First of all, for the Vikings, all-world all tight end TJ Hawkinson is out. Their second receiver, Addison, is nursing a gimpy ankle. You know what? If they double Jefferson all day, can Darnold beat him by throwing to somebody else? And for that matter, can Darnold beat him by throwing to anybody? Uh, both of these running back rooms are light. Uh, the Giants picked up Devin Singletary, most recently from Houston. Uh, but the Vikings went inside the division and got Aaron Jones. I'm not so sure that he's got much left in the tank. But I'll give a small nod to the Vikings there. But here's the where the rubber really meets the road for me. Vikings 0-4-1 ATS last five played in September. The Giants, they finished the 2023 season on a 6-1 and run against the spread, and they are 5-0-1 ATS, their last six at home. I think the Giants are underpriced here. Dare I say wrong team favored? Yes, I do. And if you learn nothing else from this video tonight, you should learn if the line is three or less, never, ever take the points. Always take the money line. Giants plus 110. All right, so I do agree. I'll, I'll go next here. I do agree. I do think the Giants are undervalued this year, and I think a lot of it was because Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones did not have a great year last year. They paid him, and, of course, what happens is the guy gets paid in the NFL. They seem to not have the greatest year of the next year, and that happened. And granted, they had tons of injuries last year, the Giants, and they did finish up a little stronger because I thought they kind of got healthy, not Daniel Jones, but other guys. I do think the Giants are the play as well, and it's more because – Let's let's be honest. If you are a, a guy that jumps around in the league where you've been in your third, fourth team at quarterback, that tells you you're probably not very good. Sam Darnold is one of those guys. And I know, um, you know, the Vikings had a million different quarterbacks last year and they had a lot of success with just throwing guys in there. But I'm going to take Giants. Um, and I would, you know, to me, the money line doesn't really matter. I think the Giants went out right. Uh, Dave, what do you think? Well, I don't want to give out any of my best bets on the show. And it, it's easy on this pick because – <laughs> this is definitely not going to be my best bet in this game. But I do um, like the side in total on this one. And I'm actually on the opposite side of you guys. I like the Vikings in this one. I don't love the Vikings, but I like the Vikings in this spot. Sam Darnold, you mentioned, he's not great, but I think that he has better weapons to work with in this game with Justin Jefferson and the rest of the receiving core that's underrated. Aaron Jones, I think he's going to have a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, at least for this game. And I do think the Vikings – Defense is a little bit better. I'll take Vikings money line. And I actually, um, even more, I like the under 41 in this game. I don't think that we're going to see a lot of offense from both teams. Daniel Jones's best weapon seems to be his leg. So I think that we're going to see a low scoring game. I don't think that we get over 41 points in this one. All right. So there you have it. Three different opinions somewhat. Uh, but, you know, that's what part of this show is about, giving all the different angles Let's look at a much better game on paper. Two teams that I think both think they, they're going to be in the playoffs this year, Jags and the Dolphins. You know, the Dolphins, they're, everything is about their offense. And can they do enough on defense to win come playoff time? Because in the playoffs, you got to play defense. But we're not in the playoffs. David, what do you like here? Dolphins minus three and a half, total 49 and a half. Yeah, looking at this at first, you almost want to jump on the over, even though it's tough jumping on a game over early on in the seasons. But uh, both of these teams did get some good work in the uh, preseason. But I do think that the Jags have a good shot in this game as well with the three and a half. But 
the way that I'm actually going to play this is I'm looking at the team total because I do think that Jacksonville can cover in this game. But then there's also a chance that Miami can go off. But I think for the Jags to cover, they've got to score some points. So I'm actually going to go with the Jags team total over 23 and a half sitting under 24 in this one. I think that the Jags get to at least uh, 27 points or more. So I'm going to go ahead and play that angle on this one. Yeah, I think the Jags are one of those hidden teams. Let's remember how good the Jags were first half of the season. And it was that last, you know, third of the season last year where the Jags kind of let everybody in it. This Jags team, they have a good defense. They have a good running game. You know, it's just can they put a whole season together? Uh, what do you think, Scott, uh, at this matchup? I'm going a different direction here. I'm going to, I'm going to look at the total, but first I'll give you a couple of fun stats if you're if you're into playing the Dolphins laying the three and a half. Uh, in the two Tagli of Tagle Viola, you know, you know that guy. In the two era, <laughs> as, as their starting quarterback, Miami is a whopping fifteen and two at home, and, and they start off strong. They're seven and one ATS last eight played in September. But the one I really like here is I like the under 49 and a half. I think this 49 and a half is a bit of an overreaction based on people's perception of these two teams. Yeah, the Dolphins, of course, have an explosive offense, but both teams made significant improvements to their defense in the offseason. Uh, Jaguars re-signed Heinz Allen and uh, Ola Kuhn while they added Eric Armstead and Darnell Savage. The uh, Dolphins, on the other hand, they opened the checkbook, brought in Calais Campbell, Jordan Brooks, Jordan Poyer, Kendall Fuller, and Shaq Barrett. This is going to be a much improved defense for the Dolphins. I think this is going to be a little bit of a slog. It's September in Florida. It's going to be hot. We could have see people running out of gas there late in the second half. I like the under in this one. I think we're going to see more punts than people think. Well, I think the key to the Dolphins' year and the playoffs is going to be about their defense and can they do a little more in their run game, commit to it a little more, to play a, more, a little bit more where you protect that defense. I mean, you're in South Florida heat. You do not want to be on the field the whole game. I mean, I don't care who you are, how good your depth is. You're going to run out of steam. And I think the Dolphins, they ran the ball su successfully last year, but they had the defense on the field a lot. Uh, I like the the under as well, leaning towards the under, but I like the Dolphins minus three and a half. I always feel as a handicapper, when they move that line to three and a half, they're just begging you to take the Jags. And I'm not falling for it. Like you said, the Dolphins the last few years have been great early. I think they do it again this year. I like the ja uh, the Dolphins, the favorite here, Dolphins minus three and a half. Now, don't forget, if you haven't done so, make sure you use that promo code EDGE to get 20% off. Hit that like and subscribe button so that we know you like what we're doing. And put in the comments if you like one of us or what we're doing uh, or what you like for this week, make sure you put it in the comments section. Now, we've got two afternoon games for you. Let's kick it off. The Broncos and the Seahawks. Seahawks minus six, total 42. The Broncos, uh, have you heard this? They got another starting quarterback. It seems like the last, you know, what, the last 10 years, it seems like every couple of years they just get new starting quarterbacks. And uh, Seahawks actually have the veteran quarterback here. And, and Geno Smith continues to defy what we remember, what we saw when he was with the Jets. What he's done since coming to Seattle has been something special. Seahawks favored by six, total 42. Scott, what do you like in this matchup? I'm going to go Prop City here. Speaking of Geno Smith, you gave me a great intro to my play, Craig. Um, he's, 250 is his passing yards total. I'm going to take the over at plus 120. You know, he had a great 2022 season, took a bit of a step backwards last year, threw 20 scores, nine picks, and just 15 games. But Seattle still went eight and seven in his 15 starts. So if you're leaning Seahawks, that's not a bad play. But he is a guy who will complete a ton of passes, 64%. 64.7% of his passes last season. Season in 2022, he led the NFL with a rate of 69.8. He also threw for over 250 yards eight times in his 16 starts last year. But most importantly, I think this is one of the finest wide receiver rooms in the NFL. You've got Metcalf, you've got Lockett, you've got the kid from Ohio State, the Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, I think he is primed for a breakout season. And they also have a very, very good tight end in Noah Font. Um, I think this is going to be uh, a lot of throwing the ball down the field. You know, this is a Seattle team that under Pete Carroll, they wanted to run the ball first and foremost. I think they're going to open it up a little bit more, and I think they have just the quarterback to do it. Give me Geno Smith over 250 passing yards plus 120. Wow, that's a nice little juice there. And I will say, you know, Coach Carroll being gone for Seattle, it's, you know, I was surprised they, they parted ways. 
But I understand ownership. It's like, you know, we don't want to be average. We want to either be good or bad in the NFL. That way, I mean, in the middle, you get you don't get good draft picks. And, you know, not great for us betters usually as well. So, David, what do you like in this matchup? Yeah, Scott, I like that prop a, a lot as well. As you said, they keep writing Geno Smith off. But as he stated, he still has not written back yet. And on the other side, you know, Sean Payton, you wonder sometimes these coaches, these real successful Super Bowl coaches, Later on in their careers, not always as successful. One thing that he's really been successful at is really pissing off quarterbacks. Uh, Jared Stidham didn't really seem to be too happy or seem like he's going to be too supportive of Bo Nix. And this is a tough spot, uh, you know, for a rookie quarterback. And I think that, just like you said with that Geno Smith prop, I think the Seahawks are going to throw the ball a lot, put up a lot of points. I know it's preseason, but that. Final preseason game against the Browns. I mean, that offense was explosive, and I don't think the Broncos are going to be able to keep up. I know it's a little bit of a big number, but I'm going to lay that six points with the Seahawks. All right, I, I'm going against the against David here because we have seen these rookie quarterbacks lately have had a lot of success early on, and I, you know, as a handicapper, you know, going on 20 years now, you bet against rookie quarterbacks early in their. NFL seasons, if they got to start, which rarely they did. Now these guys are so much more ready to play. And I guess the coaches maybe do a better job, job coaching them up as well. I think Bo Nix, he's looked good. He looked good in the preseason. I like I like this offense in the preseason. And I just wonder, I mean, giving me six points, I could see this game be, you know, 23-20 type of game. Um, I just think the Broncos are going to be a little better on offense with Bo Nix. And I think he's going to use his legs a little bit. I thought we saw that in college, going back to Auburn days even. And I love what he did at Oregon. I like the Broncos here plus the six points. I think dogs opening week are usually pretty good, especially when they're getting near, near a touchdown. So I'm going to go against the grain here and take the Broncos plus six. Now, let's finish it up, or, uh, and then we'll finish with a Sunday night football game. Another afternoon game, another in that 4 o'clock time slot, uh, Eastern time. Cowboys and the Browns. Cowboys, of course, in the offseason, the whole talk. All the different guys that haven't gotten paid, and several of them have gotten paid. Some, uh, you know, Dak has not. The Browns, you know, like there are a lot of, you know, uh, their running back uh, is still out. And you have a Broncos team that, you know, you pay when you pay a quarterback what they've paid their quarterback, and then you struggle. You got a lot of questions to answer, even if you make the playoffs. What do you like here? Browns minus two and a half, total 40 and a half. What do you like here, David? Well, I got a, a, a text right before this, no lie. I'm not sure if it was um, satire or not. I got to check the uh, sources. But it said that Deshaun Watson promises the dog pound a happy ending uh, this season. <laughs> hey, he was so, up that probably. <laughs> it cost a lot extra, by the way. <laughs> so so we'll see. I mean, a lot of people are really down on the, um, on the Cowboys, but, you know, the Browns have a lot of questions too, as you mentioned. I'm Nick Chubb's going to miss the first four games. Deshaun Watson now 12 games in the last three seasons. Denzel Ward coming off of his fifth concussion, wondering if he's going to be able to play. The Browns, um, they didn't show too much. I mean, Deshaun Watson didn't take a snap in the uh, preseason. And I know it's preseason, but they – they just, I think it's going to take them a while to get going. I know that the on paper, this was the number one defense at home last year, but um, this Cowboys offense was still in the top 10 on the road. And I think that this is going to be a tough spot for the Browns. I think that um, I have to take the Cowboys here with the uh, plus two and a half. Uh, Browns like to kick a lot of field goals. I can almost see this maybe even being a 23 to 21. So I will take that two and a half and not the money line, but I'm with the Cowboys on this one. Yeah, I, I like the the Cowboys as well. And the reason why we saw this team has been a hot start start team the last few seasons. Dak, I think, is ready to show that, hey, this wasn't a fluke what we did last year, me and CeeDee Lamb. And CeeDee Lamb got paid like he deserved. Um, I like this defense. They've got playmakers. I know the Browns defense is a little better, but I still think this Cowboy defense is pretty good. I know you, they lost their uh, defense coordinator, but I still think the Cowboys keep this close. I would buy the half a point here. I'm not a big buy guy, but I would buy the half a point week one you see a lot of field goal games, nothing worse than losing by a half a point. Give me the Cowboys plus three. What do you think, Scott? You with us? Well, I'd love to make it a clean sweep, and it'd make it a lot easier if you guys weren't so wrong. Um, <laughs> I love the Browns in this spot. Craig, you said three, but we've still got it at two and a half, and that's one of the big things I like about it. I like that it stayed below that key number of three 
and we're just laying two and a half. I think Watson is going to have a big game here. I think he has a lot to prove. They brought in a couple of new weapons in Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy. When they stretch the field, as they have to do, they can hit uh, David and Joku underneath. Dallas, they had some. They took some hits on defense. They lost uh, Stephon Gilmore. Uh, you know, they've still got Diggs. But Diggs is one of these flashy guys. He's like a Marcus Peters guy. He'll get yep. the interceptions, but he will get burned repeatedly. I'm, I'm not a Diggs fan. But where I think this one is going to be won is in the trenches. Uh, Cowboys starting a rookie left tight tackle in Tyler Guyton. I know he's an all-everything first-round pick, but you know what? I think he's going to get some serious schooling from the likes of Miles Garrett and the rest of that defensive line. Long day for the Cowboys in the trenches on offense. And I think that uh, equals a cow, uh, an easy cover for the Browns, minus the two and a half. I'll take it. I, I will add one thing in. If you can handicap turnovers, you're probably going to win a lot of bets. If you take the team that wins less turnovers, both of these teams – are good at t- uh, causing turnovers. So whoever can avoid the turnovers, probably going to win and c- cover this game. I don't know if that's a big, uh, you know, like week one, that's probably for the full season you could go with that. So uh, there you go. So let's finish it up. Sunday night football, Rams and Lions. Lions favored by three and a half, total 51. What do you like here, David? Yeah, so looking at this a matchup from last year in the postseason, it was one of those games that, it looked like it was screaming over and for the first half, it looked like that. And we really saw things slow down. Um, I do like the lions in this spot. I think that, um, you know, they're the better team. We'll see if they're the best team in the NFL. A lot of people are thinking so not quite sold on that, but I, but my favorite play for this is I actually think that we're going to see an under, I think that the lions are going to do their part. I'm not so sure about the Rams. That offensive line has some issues. And I think that this Lions defense is going to be better. So I think that this is one of those games that we could see Detroit milking some clock a little bit later on. 51 points in tie for a primetime week one. I know everyone's going to want to go over, but I'm going to go under 51 in this one. Yeah, it screams over, which means you probably should run to the under. What do you like, Scott? I'm going to, I'm going to step out here for a big closer, guys. I'm going to play a two-team SGP. I'm going to take Sam Laporta at over 60 yards receiving and Amon Ra St. Brown at over 80 yards receiving. That's going to pay us plus 310. Uh, of course, we all know that Rams season ended in a heartbreaking loss last year. Um, but they have, uh, as far as the Lions go, they have upgraded a secondary that uh, allowed 367 yards to Matthew Stafford last season. They're running Carlton Davis III from Tampa Bay. They brought in Amit Robinson, uh, Robertson from the Raiders. Uh, they've also got a rookie cornerback starting in Terry and Arnold. But the Rams, they're the ones with the big shoes to fill on defense, especially with Aaron Donald retiring. Aaron Jones is off to Tennessee. This is a Los Angeles team that, with those two players, still allowed the sixth most receiving yards and the second most touchdowns to tight end. I think the Lions OC, Ben Johnson, is going to find all kinds of creative ways to get Amon Ra St. Brown to the, the football against a, let's just be honest, a very bad Rams secondary. I think they're going to throw the ball down the field. As far as the total goes, I don't know, because I don't know how much the Rams are going to do. I think the Lions are going to be greatly improved on the defensive side. I'll stick with my offense here. Laporta over 60, St. Brown over 80, plus 310. Cha-ching, baby. Uh, everybody's on the Lions. Uh, that is what worries me in this game. I mean, everybody I've talked to, um, you know, we have this guy named Detroit Lenny that works for us that's telling them how great the Lions are. That makes me want to think that the Lions might fall a little bit. They won a lot of close games last year. And, you know, to me in the NFL, is winning the turnover battles and winning your close games. We saw a couple years ago, Vikings won all the close games last year. They didn't win those close games as much. And that's why they didn't make the playoffs. And to me, the Lions, I think, are going to fall back to the, you know, return a little closer to where we kind of expected them last year. We didn't expect that huge leap. And I think the Rams team, we saw what Puka Nakua uh, could do. We also seen Cooper Cup and, you know, Matt Stafford against his old team. I don't think enough people are talking about that because they got, you know, they knocked him out in the playoffs. Give me the Rams plus three and a half. I, you know, usually when it's three minus three and a half, I'm taking the, uh, you know, the minus. And but I just think this Rams team and Matt Stafford going back home, I think he's got something for him. I could see the Lions winning by a field goal, so let's take the three and a half just in case. But I would sprinkle the money line a little bit on this one. All right, so there you have it. Those are your five free picks. We're gonna have 
Uh, we'll also be doing the Monday Night Football, so make sure you stay tuned. That one will come out. We'll be doing this every week. Uh, Scott and I will have a different guest every week. Some weeks it'll be uh, Scott, some of, the, of our other Picks and Parlays handicappers. So make sure you stay tuned. It will be released every Thursday, uh, Thursday evening uh, around the same time, uh, around the start of the Thursday Night Football game. And then the Monday Night Football will release that on Saturday after the start of the college football game. So make sure you stay tuned and you like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, if you like what we said, our, these aren't our best bets. We like these plays. But these aren't our best bets. Go over to picksandparlays.net. Use that promo code EDGE. Save 2-0, 20% off on any of our plays or any of the experts over at Picks and Parlays. All right. Have a great day. Good luck in week one. Remember, you don't have to bet every game on the board. and You don't have to bet even every play this week. So have a good day. Good luck.